Good. So we're going to look at two. Uh, I'm breaking these actually into two things. That networking, as in building an environment for uh, in our in our networks and partnerships alliances, for uh, the ability for people to connect, and then some elements on enriching um, uh, how we handle um, the um, uh, explaining or preserving what we uh, learn from a con consultation or a conference. So let's look at uh, this first. Just asking the question, what are attendees after? And I want to thank Lucas for pointing this, uh, this modification of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, if you can see in this joke, it's kind of saying that um, we have uh, uh, this growing desire to have Wi-Fi above all things. Um, but I do, I do think that that speaks to the desire people have to connect, to to be able to check in on what um, the current flow, and so that's really an amazing um, development. So here's uh, on networking, um, the older style that and I think we're really seeing so much these days, especially with social media and um, with it, it, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions of people who are connecting uh, all around the world and um, is we're moving from this information sharing type style to connection making and uh, from one to the one-to-many kind of a presentation style to many-to-many -many where it's interactive. And so I, in networking, it becomes then for network leaders, uh, those who are trying to build a collaborative atmosphere, means that uh, the leaders themselves are connection makers and they create an environment where network members can con connect with each other. Um, it's not just we're, we're coming into a big room, but we have to think deliberately and intentionally about how we can set up that environment. This is a chart, um, a table that kind of looks at a couple of factors here. Uh, on the bottom is a low sharing environment, and the top is a high sharing environment. That is sharing as in connecting people. And uh, the left is one-to-one -one interaction, and the right is many-to-many uh, or many-with-many. Many. So you can, you can perhaps try to con uh, place where your uh, network or partnership might be in this. If it's toward the left, um, it's more toward enabling one-to-one -one interaction. So you might have, with the low sharing level, uh, they're getting together and they're they're able to compare how they're doing what they're doing uh, if it's if it's more um, uh, toward a high sharing environment the yellow they'll be um, pairing uh, your environment will result in them being able to pair to work on initiatives together uh, and if uh, it's in the green you're more um, you're a low sharing environment and it's with a whole group so the whole network is information sharing and um, doing that together and then in the blue um, you'll find that that uh, it's a high sharing that's a high encouragement for uh, uh, large numbers larger numbers to undertake projects together and so it's a network wide um, joint project kind of environment so this is something you might think about on for yours, and and is it where you want to be? Um, what moves it from one square to another? What are the implications for um, the design then of our of our consultations? Well, I think one is on uh, is we have to realize that as a, as network leaders, it's part of our responsibilities to aggregate or preserve um, the knowledge assets that are coming under our control and uh, to, uh, to take action to do that. I, I've loved this phrase um, that Phil uh, uh, brought into our environment of creating a common data set. 
the reason that um, the leadership works at trying to preserve this is because it's one thing for everybody to have their own recollection of what happened, what's been happening through the year, and so on. And another to have a, a common set that we can reference. And this is uh, far more important than you might believe at first, because um, when you get into a situation where people, different people believe different things happened, or we decided different things, so on, it can be a mess. So we want a common data set. Um, in this, um, what I wanted to share is a, is a, a plan or a, a, a format, a template, for how to make a, a consultation summary report. And uh, well, we, what we have here is um, um, just an outline. So you begin with uh, labeling it and uh, participant statistics um, that show uh, the kinds of people who are there, the um, maybe their percentages, uh, where they came from, some some things like that. The next section of this would be an executive summary, where you would list in maybe you know uh, two three um, paragraphs what uh, the essence of what happened, um, some of the most important. Um, things that uh, occurred in the in in the time together, uh, and an agenda summary then would actually look at uh, what is the what was the framework for the consultation, and um, so it shows the kind of flow that uh, you did then, and and the next section would have highlights. So if there were uh, presenters, maybe a key thought, uh, it can't. Uh, you can, in appendix and so on, you might have more fuller reports if you wanted to, of um, or papers. But highlights uh, that kind of uh, are real key takeaways that, at least to some people's minds, from panels and those kinds of things. If there is some sort of business conducted, you'd want to capture that, uh, reaffirmations of the, um, of the facilitation team, membership, new elections, if you have that sort of thing, decisions on that uh, recorded. And this thing, again, the current team leaders. Um, and then in appendix, you can list other, other things. It might be um, those who attended, a list of organizations. And uh, if you have an evaluation done, say, at the end of the conference, uh, what were you know, what's a summary? These kinds of things can really help to um, build together a common data set that really uh, assists um, a group uh, if, for moving ahead. It positions it. And uh, it lets people look back on this, this, this one piece that um, can be used in a variety of ways. I was pleased to see that um, this kind of summary report also can be utilized uh, for uh, funding requests because it's already got a comp kind of a comprehensive look. So that's another purpose to which you can put this summary. I think uh, what I'd like to do now is move us into discussion. And um, there is a question here. Um, I've got time for that. You mentioned knowledge stewardship. Can you share a story that unpacks that idea a little more? What does it look like in its effective practice? Preserving the knowledge, we have far better uh, people who can speak on knowledge stewardship um, from especially Vision 5.9. But um, knowledge stewardship is trying to say it's not just what uh, is in a particular leader's head, it's trying to draw out the corporate, what we're learning together, um, trying to flush out what we are uh, valuing, what we come to value, what we come to understand, and, um, and maybe it's sharing, sharing summaries of that with the whole group at some point. Um, it, it can take a lot of different forms. So yes, we've got some uh, you can talk about ways, perhaps, that you preserve um, that in the um, breakout. So I think let's go to the breakout then.